you know that so far we have discussed about this bessel <coughs> differential equation that is a second order differential equation <coughs> like we have the another kind of a second order differential equation this is called legendre differential equation second order differential equation this is called legendre differential equation bolte hain now this legendre function or legendre differential equation why does it arise if you remember in your last unit we had discussed the separation of the variable technique wherein we actually separate out the helmholtz equation or the laplace equation in the spherical polar coordinates so legendre functions actually are legendre functions they are actually very important in physics very important in physics because they do arise because they arise when the laplace laplace or helmholtz equation helmholtz equations <clears throat> for central force problems for central force problems are separated in spherical coordinates are separated in spherical coordinates and you know that spherical coordinates are rho theta and phi right so <clears throat> Dou to psi plus some k of psi will be equal to some lambda into r Helmholtz equation. This kind of an equation or the Laplace equation dou to psi is equal to zero. So if you go back through your notes, you will see that we have separated out the Laplace equation or the Helmholtz equation, the spherical coordinates, and the differential equation which uh, arises there is of the form of like um, this thing, one minus x square. Y double prime plus minus two x y prime plus some constant into y. I will write here m into m plus y into y is equal to zero. So this kind of a differential equation, this is called a Legendre differential equation, and it arises in the problems where when the Laplace or Helmholtz equation for central force problems are separated in the spherical coordinates. So when we separate them into, we will get three different equations, and one of the equation will be like this. So we will get obviously that one of the differential equation we will <clears throat> get it in terms of a rho theta phi, but the general form of this Legendre differential equation is this. Now, before trying to find out the solution to this particular differential equation, I also gave you this kind of a problem when we were trying to look for the whether this particular differential equation has a singularity or an isolated singularity, or whatever has an ordinary point. Now, if you look at this particular differential equation, you will see that this particular differential equation has the regular singularity as this particular differential equation has regular singularity we have already proved it how it has regular singularity at x is equal to plus minus 1 and also at x is equal to infinity so both at x is equal to plus minus 1 and x is equal to infinity this particular differential equation has the regular singularity <clears throat> then <clears throat> So we know that if we know that uh, the particular differential equation has an ordinary point or a regular singularity, then we can have a series expansion. We can find out the series around that around any particular point. So if it has a singularity at x is equal to plus minus one and x is equal to infinity, therefore it has, therefore this has a series solution, series solution. This has a series solution about some point x is equal to zero, and has unit area of convergence. Has unit area of convergence. That is, this that the series which will obtain that series solution will converge, and it will be converging for this mod of x less than one so it will be convergent for this one okay so let me uh, repeat it again so i said this legendary differential equations are actually arise when the laplace or the helmholtz equations are separated in the spherical coordinates there this kind of a differential equation will arise now if you look at this particular differential equation we can find out whether this particular differential equation has an ordinary point at certain point 
at some finite point or whether it has a regular or irregular singularity. Now we see that after we have already obtained this also in your previous examples that this particular differential equation has a regular singularity at x is equal to plus minus one because I can just divide throughout by one minus x square and see the behavior of this p of x and q of x. Okay, so this has a regular singularity at this and also at the infinity. Therefore, the series solution, we can have a series solution about the, some point x is equal to zero. And when the, the, the series solution that will always be convergent for as a unit area of convergence that it will converge for more of less than or equal to one. Okay, now coming, let us go to the solution, how to how we find out the solution. So it will be again a repetition of the same thing which we have done for the to find out the series solution of certain problems, second order differential equations. But here, <clears throat> what I so there it will be a little different from that particular case because we need to find out the polynomials now from the solution that we called as a legend of polynomials. So I will discuss that part in the later. But let us uh, try to find it step by step. So I again I will consider. This legendary differential equation, this legendary differential equation has a form of like, you know, one minus x square, y double prime minus two x y prime. Plus this is a general, most general form of this, uh, uh, what we call as a legendary differential equation. So this is equal to zero. So you can name this as equation first. Okay. So here M is any real number. You can, M is a real number. Okay. Now, the solution to this particular differential equation, the solution which we will obtain for that particular differential equation, obviously, since it is a second order differential equation, it will have the two, uh, two different solutions, whether they are linearly independent or not, we will check that later. So, it will have the two different solutions. So, those solutions are called as the legend of functions of degree m. And the solution which we will find for this particular differential equation, we call them as the legend of functions. Let me write it here. Mm, the solutions of this equation, the solutions of this equation are called Legender functions of degree m. Okay. Now, this m is, as I said, is a real number. It's a non-negative integer. So, m can take the values like 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. Non-negative integer. Okay. Now, these legend of functions, they are also sometimes called as legend polynomials. Polynomials. Actually, we need to do the exercise later on. When we will find out the solution, we call them as the legend of functions. The solution is legend of polynomials. We will come to that after finding the solution and we usually represent them by PM of X. Okay. <clears throat> now, how we solve the second order differential equation? Now, you know that we can solve this second order differential equation by the method of power series. Method of power series. Can be solved by the method of power series. So we can take the powers of x either in the ascending order, in the descending order. I mean, I can either take the x raised power n plus r, n plus some r, or I can take it in x raised power n minus r. Both the cases are uh, okay. If you are if you are taking the solution as an ascending powers of r or as a descending powers of r. So you will arrive at the same result. But in this case, for the solution to for the power series solution to this legendary differential equation, we are actually taking this the powers of x uh, in the descending order, right? You can also take the ascending order. You will come to know at the one what I mean by ascending or the descending. So you know that if I am considering this particular differential equation, then let the solution to this particular differential equation be equal to some summation and running from 0 to infinity c n x raised to power n minus r earlier we used it you, you can also take it like y is equal to summation and running from 0 to infinity c n x raised to power n plus r yeah m plus r hum abhi karte aare the or cases mein. so now for here i am going to take it in the descending order because we have done for the for, for ascending order we have done it for so many problems. Let us do it here for it for a descending order. And also, most of the books have actually done it for the descending powers of the x. So let so name this as equation one. 
one you can name this as equation two. Similarly, now you after differentiating this particular differential equation, you know that y prime will be equal to summation over n running from zero to infinity, c n n minus r x raised to the power n minus r minus one, right? Okay, now taking the again the derivative with respect to x, you will say that this will be summation n running from zero to infinity, c n n plus n minus r into n minus r minus one x raised to power n minus r minus 2. Okay, same this as equation 3, this as equation 4. Then what is the next term? We just substitute these equation y, y prime and y double prime in your given differential equation. So once you substitute it in the given differential equation, now this particular differential equation, it will become simply 1 minus x square into y double prime. y double prime is your summation over n running from 0 to infinity, cn n minus r, n minus r minus 1, x raised to the power n minus r minus 2. Hmm? I'm written fast because we, you have done a lot of problems, similar kind of a problems. So it will be easy for you to go through all these steps. Okay, plus, now what will be the next step? So next step is, sorry, minus twice x summation over n running from 0 to infinity, cn, n minus r, then x raised to the power n minus r minus 1. Okay, what is the last term? Plus m into m plus 1, y is your summation over n running from 0 to infinity, c n x raised to power n minus r. All these terms is equal to 0, right? Okay, <clears throat> now one thing I can do, I, I can just multiply, I can write the, these all these terms because it will be two terms here. So, if we are going to multiply it by 1, the first term will be simply, so you can write these equations as summation over n, c n, when I multiply it by 1, n minus r, uh, n minus r minus 1, x raised to the power n minus r minus 2, okay? Now, when you are going to multiply it by x square, so it will be minus summation over n, c n, n minus r, n minus r minus 1 x raised to the power n minus r only because this x square term will get multiplied to this particular part. Okay. Okay. Now the another term, <clears throat> another term will be now uh, minus minus twice summation over n running from 0 to infinity c n n minus r into x raised to the power n minus r because x is multiplied to this particular term plus a value term i am going to okay plus uh, uh, plus some m into m plus 1 m plus 1 into summation over m x raised power c n x raised power n plus r yeah please leave it here same term this term will remain same now let me just uh, write this equation here because i am uh, it will i can and then i will shift to the, the next page okay because I need to look at this particular equation. Now, same equation, I can put it like, if you look at this particular equation, if you look at this particular equation, I can bring these terms because they all have the same coefficient, c and x raised power n minus r, c and x raised power n minus r, and c and x raised power. So how I will write down this particular equation here, then I will shift to the next page. So just see, the first term I will remain write as a c n, c n, n minus r, x raised to power, oh sorry, n minus r minus 1, x raised to power n minus r minus 2, okay. Now, see, the, these terms are the same. So, let me write this first term. I will write first m into m plus 1, because it has the same con this factor, c and x raised to power r minus 1, that I am going to write it at the end, okay. The second term will be minus 2 is n minus r, and then this term is left. It will be minus uh, n minus r, n minus r into n minus r minus 1, cn x raised to power n minus r is equal to 0. So cn x raised to power n minus 1 is multiplication to all, all these individual terms, right? Okay. Or further, I can just simplify it. Then I will find out the reconciliation and all those things from that very equation. So you can write it like... <coughs> because the cn again is the common factor so you can write down this equation as summation over n uh, n minus r n minus r minus 1 x raised to power n minus r minus 2 plus uh, 
m into m plus 1 m plus 1 minus twice n minus r into minus n minus r into n minus r minus 1 so whole multiply whole this uh, multiplication to all these terms is cn that will be equal to zero so this because the cn factor is here and cn factor is here so instead of writing it separately you can do it i'm just taking it common again okay so now let us move back to the next p i will keep it as such because uh, i might need this as a reference later on so let us see so now aap log ye likh rahe ho sath sath if you are writing it on your page somebody will tell me the equation and i will write it again now now from this very equation what i will do from this very equation just i will just equate the coefficient of x raised power r the coefficient of x raised power r so how i will write down the equation equate the coefficient x raised power r equal to 0 so to do that the okay yahan pe aapka hai x raised power n minus r so i will just make n equal to करेक्शन वी हैव टू जस्ट डू इट ये यहाँ पे लिख लीजिए आर माइनस एन बिकॉज वी आर इट टेकिंग इट इन दिसेंडिंग पावर ऑफ आर सो आर माइनस एन नहीं तो so, यहाँ पे भी r माइनस एन जहां पे भी n माइनस आर है वहां पे r माइनस एन आप कर दीजिए r माइनस एन आर माइनस एन सिमिलरली यहाँ पे r माइनस एन यहाँ पे r माइनस एन माइनस वन ठीक है r माइनस एन माइनस वन जस्ट जस्ट रिप्लेस इट थ्रू आउट सो लेट मी राइट द इक्वेशन हियर आई विल जस्ट राइट आउट दिस इक्वेशन अगेन हियर सो यू विल राइट आउट रिप्लेस आर बाई जो एन माइनस आर मैंने किया था उसको थ्रू आउट आप रिप्लेस कीजिएगा आर माइनस एन से राइट not n minus r or minus n okay so i will write down here summation n running from 0 to infinity this uh, r minus n into r minus n minus 1 x raised to power r minus n minus 2 plus m into m plus 1 minus r minus n min into into फिलहाल मैं ये पूरा लिख लेता हूँ ट्वाइस आर माइनस एन माइनस ट्वाइस आर माइनस एन माइनस आर माइनस एन इन टू आर सॉरी आर माइनस एन माइनस वन आर इन टू आर माइनस एन माइनस वन देन आई हैव सी एन cn x raised power okay cn first i will write down multiplied by x raised power r minus n whole multiply to this all these terms is C n. Now see, you can just further simplify it here. Let me just further simplify. It will be like minus two r minus two n. It will be here minus uh, r square minus uh, r n uh, minus r n minus n minus r. Then I will just multiply it minus r n plus n square n. Plus n, right? Plus n. So this this is uh, minus r n minus r n. This minus will make it plus. This r n will get cancel out, and also uh, plus r minus n. So all these terms I will put it like this will be minus r minus n r minus n into r minus n plus one. So in a stroke. these two terms these two terms this term and this term i will just write in r minus n because if you multiply by r minus 1 into this you will get all these terms back yahan pe aap isko thoda simplify kare it's simple sa algebra hai and you will get like r minus n r minus n plus 1 okay so then how i will write down this particular equation so you can write down this equation as summation running from 0 to infinity r minus n 
r minus n minus 1 uh, into x raised to the power r minus n minus 2 plus m into m plus 1 minus m into m plus 1 minus this r minus n into r minus n plus 1 यहाँ पे मैंने r minus one factor common किया है, so यहाँ पे आपका two बच जाएगा, then r minus one, so that's why I am writing it as two i r minus one, और ये two और ये minus one आपका cancel हो जाएगा, rest will remain same, so it will be minus two, sorry plus two minus one, right? Okay, वैसे भी आप कर सकते हो उसको r minus one n into then x raised to power r minus n whole multiplied by c n, this will be equal to zero, okay? Now I will just equate the coefficient up from this term, equate the coefficient just making n equal to zero. Okay. Now equating coefficient of x raised to power r to zero. In order to equate the coefficient of x raised to power r to zero, that is we will make for, for this n is equal to zero. So if n is equal to zero, so this will be here r minus 2. So only this term x raised power r will, will survive here. You just, uh, uh, un, uh, if anybody is getting some problem in understanding this thing, he can just uh, tell me. He can unmute himself and ask the questions. Or just, I will just move forward. I can just move, move ahead. Is it okay up to this point? Everyone, is it okay or shall I repeat it some? Jaldi, quickly. Okay, so it's okay. Uh, now, so on equating the coefficient of x raised power r to zero, that is for making r equal to zero, what will be this equation will look like? So it will be like c n, this, this part, it will be like c zero m into m plus one minus n equal to zero, it will be r into r plus one. Okay, it will be equal to zero. Now, you know that this c zero cannot be equal to zero because the coefficient will be something that means m into m plus 1 minus r into r plus 1 should be equal to 0 right now you can just write down this equation as just multiply it it will be m square minus m minus r square minus r will be equal to 0 right or i can write this as m minus r into m plus r plus 1 right m plus r plus 1 is equal to 0 so r from this equation you can say that it means that m minus r either m minus r is equal to 0 or m plus r minus 1 sorry plus 1 is equal to 0 implies either r is equal to m or this uh, m is equal to this r is equal to minus m minus 1 so these two values initial equation is combo mm -hmm. m into m plus 1 Sorry? Sir, m into m plus 1 is m plus 1, yes. It is m into m plus 1. m into m plus 1. So, m square plus m. Yes. Uh, then, uh, okay. It will be now m minus r. Then it is okay. Then m square. Then plus m. Minus rm. Right? Minus rm and plus rm will cancel out. And that will be now minus r square and minus r okay so we have these two different values for r so now we will try to find out the solution one corresponding to when r is having this value and when r is having this value because you know that what we are actually interested in finding in order to find out the solution as i said solution is given by summation c n x raised to power r minus n right r minus n now n can take the values like so we have the solution like c0 x raised to power r minus 0 that is r c, then plus c1 x raised to power r minus 1 c2 c2 x raised to power r minus 2 right plus so on some other terms so i was i have to find out this corners this option c0 c1 and also we need to find out the r now the value of r we have find either it is m or it is equal to m minus one so we have the two different solution correspond to two different values of r okay now before finding out the option i will just try to make it one thing we will try to find out the find the c1 by equating the coefficient of x raised power r minus term now on equating now equating the coefficient of 
of the equating the coefficient of uh, x raised power r minus 1 to 0. So that can be obtained. So that can be obtained by putting n is equal to 1 in your given equation. Jo abhi equation likhi thi. This particular equation n is equal to 1. So we will have this. So when we will substitute n is equal to 1 in this particular equation, what could be this equation like? Okay, so this equation will be now like C0, uh, Cn is C1, m into m plus 1 will remain as such minus. Now we have the another term, n is 1, so it will be r minus 1, r minus n is r minus 1, and r minus n plus 1, that is simply r, so it will be equal to 0, right? Or I will say that this C1, this is m square plus m uh, minus r square minus uh, into minus will become plus r will be equal to zero or i will say that c1 is equal to m plus uh, r into m plus r m minus r plus one will be equal to zero now this cannot be equal to zero because either m is equal to r r is equal to m and either r is equal to m minus m plus one so <clears throat> So implies this C1 is equal to zero because of the product of these two things is zero. Since this is not equal to zero, it implies that this will be equal to zero. C1 is equal to zero as M plus R into M. Sir, we have a little confusion. It is not equal to zero. Okay. Yes, yes, please. Hmm. Please, sir, when we change the summation, when we change the summation, like we have done here, N is equal to one, so why do we change the summation? That is our summation, N is equal to zero. So, if we have to change n is equal to 1, we have to change it first. Here, for example, you are saying, here? Yes, sir. When our summation n is equal to 0. Right, right. See, you are saying that, for example, I have this particular equation, right? Yes, sir. This particular equation. So, I am just trying to find out when I am changing the value of n. And hmm. so why we are not changing the substitution. So this equation which we are writing here is an initial equation. We are not taking this as a summation actually. summation I am not writing the summation. I am writing it without the summation. So I am just equating the coefficient of this general term here. So this C0. So because now I will get only the constant value. I, I, I'm not bothered about what will be the value. See, the n will not appear anywhere in this initial equation. If you will see this equation, this is without the summation term. This is without the summation. So I'm not I'm, to find out the recurrence summation or to find out this initial equation. I'm not bothered about the summation term. I have to take the equation, this coefficient of some term, the coefficient of a term which we are actually interested in, like we have r minus one or r minus two or x raised power r. So we are writing it without the summation term. Okay? Is it okay? नहीं सर पर हम तो जब हम r minus n लेते हैं हम n को चेंज कर रहे हैं कि n one है तो हमें समीकरण को भी चेंज करना पड़ेगा ना क्योंकि हम c n है हमारा तो हम इसको लिख रहे हैं c zero या c one लिख रहे हैं तो समीकरण को क्यों नहीं चेंज कर रहे वही चीज तो मैं कह रहा हूँ ना मतलब what is the fun of writing it as summation here? I am just equating the some coefficient of this particular term. So I am not bothered about because अगर मैं for example summation को change करूँ यहाँ summation यहाँ रहने का one does it make any sense to this equation? Is n being is n anywhere in this equation? So it doesn't make any sound if I am taking the summation and for the initial equation or for the reconciliation I do not need I have to equate the coefficient of some particular term like either x minus r or any other term. Okay, let us for example, up command ki chalto. I am just writing it summation. For example, you say n may change karo. n is equal to zero. Now I change to n is equal to one. So n one rank five. How will it make any difference to this particular equation here? जी सर फिर हमें अगर हम दूसरी टर्म में समेशन एंड इज इक्वल टू वन लिख रहे तो हमें इसको पहले इस बेवैल्यूज पुट करने पड़ेंगे जीरो के ताकि फिर ये वन फॉर्म में आए फिर से जीरो फॉर्म में आए अगर हम समेशन पहली वाली टर्म को भी देते हैं और समेशन दूसरी वाली टर्म को भी देते हैं अपना अपना साथ में तो जो दूसरी वाली टर्म है ना वो आएगा समेशन एन इज इक्वल टू जीरो मगर अब हम चेंज उसको कर रहे हैं हम उसको लिख रहे हैं समेशन एन इज इक्वल टू वन 
तो हमें ये दो टर्म्स अगर हम इसको फिर से जीरो लाएंगे क्योंकि पहले जीरो थी फिर हमने इसको आपको चेंज ही नहीं करना है समेशन सो यही टर्म जो है ना यू हैव टू पुट दिस इक्वेशन लाइक एज इट इज यू डोंट नीड टू व्हाई यू विल राइट एन समेशन व्हाई सो फॉर द इनिशियल इक्वेशन मैंने आपको शुरू में जब जनरल मेथड हम बताए थे फॉर द इनिशियल इक्वेशन वी नीड टू इक्वेट द क्वेश्चन ऑफ अ लवस टर्म सो हाउ आई विल ऑब्टेन द क्वेश्चन ऑफ अ लवस दिस टर्म सॉरी जनरल टर्म x इज पावर r इक्वल टू 0 दैट इज बाय पुटिंग इफ सो जनरल टर्म x इज पावर r इज बाय पुटिंग n इक्वल टू 0 n इक्वल टू 0 इन दिस पर्टिकुलर इक्वेशन राइट so when so i have to equate the coefficient of a particular term in in from this very general term so the, we don't have, have to carry out the summation like for example ab aage dekho hum recurrence relation mein karenge we are not i am not i am not going to write the summation term any further right so initial equation likhne ke liye root likhne ke liye mujhe i am not bothered about the sign mujhe ye term khali coefficient without the summation term it's like for example summation is for example if i am going to try, tell you the integral of x square into dx so i will say you what is the integrand so you will say that integrand here is the, the function which we are going to integrate is x square theek okay? hai you will not say that the integrand is like integral over this thing so similarly from this very particular equation from this particular equation i need to find i am just equating the coefficient of this i am not putting anything in this particular equation just to get the value of a r i am just equating without so i am taking it without the summation mujhe summation koi lena hi nahi summation main agar le bhi lo ab maine yahan pe bata diya it doesn't make any difference it doesn't make because n is not being carried out in this particular differential equation ji sir okay ji sir okay so yahan pe ye keh raha tha main so this uh, uh, Since so, this is not equal to implies the c1 is equal to zero. So if c1 is equal to zero, implies this uh, c3 because you know that c1 is equal to c3 is equal to c5 because all co all all coefficients can be found in terms of a c1. They are all equal to zero, right? So we are not bothered about those odd coefficients. Now we need to look for the even coefficients only, like we have c0, c2, c4. Okay. So in order to find out those coefficients, I will try to find out the reconciliation. सी मैं एक बार फिर से आपको अभी ये रिकॉन्सलेशन पे दिखा देता हूँ कि मुझे इसकी जरूरत ही नहीं पड़ेगी समेशन लिखने की तो फिर मैं वहां पे भी समेशन को वो मान के चलूंगा सो दिस इज दिस इज द जनरल टर्म आई राइटिंग हियर दिस इज जनरल टर्म सो इंडिशियल इक्वेशन सो दिस मेथड इज अ पर्टिकुलर वे टू फाइंड आउट द इंडिशियल इक्वेशन सो इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड आउट द इंडिशियल इक्वेशन वी ऑलवेज इक्वेट द क्वेश्चन ऑफ इट सम जनरल टर्म एक्सरेस फॉर आर आर इक्वल टू जीरो coefficient so this is the coefficient of a term ye hame udhar se hi bataya gaya hai do people who have divisor method so we have to equate the coefficient this is a coefficient to this general term similarly for the reconciliation we will equate the coefficient of this term without the summation we don't have, we are not bothered about the summation term okay okay so we have only 2 minutes left if you have anything for that also come then we will move to find out the reconciliation to this particular equation but you need to rejoin is it okay everyone kisi ko aur koi cheez puchna ho to he can ask but quickly ha huh? is it okay to the rest of you burhan is it okay yes sir okay fine then i'm just stopping it here and you just log into the next